More snow on the way to central and eastern Kentucky. I've got the latest snowfall numbers and numbers from the temperature department that may have you searching the history books just ahead. Emergency shelters across Lexington are serving more people than normal because of this weather. And they need your help keeping those people fed and warm. She's like a mother to all of her sisters, her nieces and nephews. A Mount Sterling woman is dead after a house fire. We'll tell you how she'll be remembered. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 530. Good evening. Kentuckians spending the day digging out after yesterday's winter storm, but don't put those shovels away just yet. Yeah, keep them handy. We are tracking more snow heading towards the Bluegrass State late tonight and into tomorrow. So we. Here, weather day. Our weather team coverage begins now with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Yeah, good idea, as you mentioned, guys, to keep the shovels handy. You're going to put them to use again tomorrow. No, it's not going to be anything like what we had yesterday, but when you're talking about two, three, or four inches of snow on top of 10 to 14, 15, 16 inches of snow, boy, it's really going to cause some more issues. Starting to see the clouds increasing ahead of our next system that arrives into town late tonight and tomorrow that will likely put down a swath of two to four inches into much of central and eastern Kentucky. That's additional snow on top of what we already have, and we already have a lot that is out there. Winter weather advisory is out for all of Kentucky, parts of Indiana, parts of Ohio, West Virginia, Virginia, down into the volunteer state of Tennessee as well. That's a lot of real estate covered for this quick-hitting system that scoots its way into town later tonight. Now, Defender, as of now, showing a couple of snowflakes around Covington toward the Dayton and Indianapolis area. That's not the stuff I'm going to focus on. I'm Focusing on what is actually on the tail end of our Arctic front that is now scooting out of Kansas into parts of Missouri. When you start to see a little bit of a tail on this, where we're developing some very gusty showers, almost convective in nature, that's a good indicator that that is a potent little system that has some spin with it, has some lift, and it's going to basically scoot right on top of the air. When you get rising air, the quicker we can get that air to rise, the more precipitation that you're going to be producing. And in the form tomorrow of snow area-wide. Travel impact, it will take a big hit again. So there were clear roads tonight. Will be messy again tomorrow. Uh, snow, not as much as what we had by any means, but a couple, three, four inches possibility. Also, the cold that comes in behind this will combine with wind. Those winds will blow that snow around a little bit, but guys, the cold and the wind will combine for brutally cold wind chills. But the numbers from just the cold may set records for Thursday into Friday. We have a lot to talk about in the form of wintry weather when I come back in a few minutes. Not for just the next few days, but mind you, all the way through the next week and change. All right, Chris, thank you. Well, the weather is already prompting dozens of school districts to cancel classes tomorrow, including Fayette County. We want you to check the bottom of your screen for that list. Many roads are still impassable. That's causing problems for some people who have to be on the road to make a living. Victor Puente continues our weather team coverage. He's talking with drivers in Madison County who could not avoid driving on the slick roads. This snow is keeping a lot of people home from work because they can't drive in it. But it's also keeping people who drive for a living from getting where they need to go. DeAndre Pleasant says he was trying his best to be safe and not drive on these snow covered roads. Trying to find somewhere to stay for, you know, for the night till it's over with and end up in a ditch. The lot he was pulling into was already filled with drivers who thought better of risking these roads. Woke up there about five and a half on the ground. I decided I wasn't going anywhere till it cleared up. Well, that snow also made it hard to tell where the lot ended and a ditch began. I've never even been over here in this one, so I had no clue that was, that was a ditch right there. I could have made it, but it was a truck, and I, I had to stop. Luckily, his slide happened about a block away from Powell's towing in Berea. They eventually got him out just in time to check on the main roads that have been steadily improving. Because I was up here last week, and it looked nothing like this. <laughs> State police tell me the work road crews did on the interstate paid off. They say they haven't seen too many issues, although they are still seeing a few trucks getting stuck on off ramps. In Madison County, Victor Puente, WKYT. Drivers in Scott County say they're still trying to avoid slippery, snow covered side streets, but for the most part, road conditions there are slowly improving. Since 3 Monday morning, the 911 center says 30% of their calls have been from drivers who need help. 
We're told the slick streets caused 11 accidents. Officials say those numbers are low because people listen to the warnings to stay off the roads. I'm starting to get a little tired. I'm kind of running on fumes a little bit. I only got a couple more hours, so I'll be, I'll be good to go. Just as long as I can get home here in a couple of hours, I'll be fine. Road crews say they used about 500 tons of salt yesterday. They typically put out 150 tons during a normal snowfall. Well, the sun that we saw out there today certainly helped melt some of that snow off the roads and cars this afternoon. But as Chris told us, we could see more snow overnight. Road crews are still playing catch up from yesterday's storm. Tanner Hesterberg has been keeping an eye on conditions along Interstate 75 in Laurel County. Well, good afternoon from London. Both lanes of Interstate 75 looking pretty good right now, or at least in the best shape they've been since Sunday. But perhaps the bigger story, the back roads, many of which have not been treated yet by road crews because they've been working so hard to treat priority roads like I-75. One of London's busiest roads is Highway 192, which is mostly clear of snow and ice today after being extremely slick last night. Jonathan McConnell lives on a back road in Clay County and has made the drive to London each of the past two days. There is no comparison. It's about like that snow bank over there. It's there. If you ain't got a four-wheel drive, it's impossible. And it's hard with a four-wheel drive. But while the back roads suffer from the winter storm, some folks are profiting. Donnie McQueen plows parking lots for several businesses in London. I stay busy all the time anyway, so uh, I mean it helps on, on the sloppy days, you know, you can't really do nothing. So I guess it helps as far as that goes. Help that may be needed again tomorrow. Now, if we do end up receiving any additional snow in this area tonight, transportation officials tell me they're going to take a wait and see approach. Reporting in Laurel County, Tanner Husterberg, WKYT. Well, check this out. A close call for a salt truck driver today in Laurel County. Uh, this eyewitness picture was sent in to us from Sinking Creek Road in London. The plow truck ran off the road, flipped, and landed on its side. The road department tells us, though, the driver was okay. The snow and cold temperatures keeping local emergency shelters packed. Some organizations we talk with are at capacity. Our weather team coverage continues with Kristen Kennedy. She's been very busy today. She shows us how shelters are handling all these people. The snow is putting a strain on shelter resources. We've been doing using more food than usual because the center has been staying open. Letha Sims is in her 10th year of serving people at the Catholic Action Center. Monday night, she served supper to more than 150. That's not including that we have people that cannot get out in the neighborhood. We've been asking some of our volunteers. We've been going taking them food to their houses and blankets, making sure that they warm. Across town, the community inn is staying open around the clock. If you see folk that need a place to stay, send them to us. We won't turn anyone away. Uh, we'll make every effort to get everybody in and keep them safe and warm and give them something to eat and something hot to drink for as long as this lasts. Larry Olinar is hoping their food lasts longer than the Arctic freeze. They need supplies for sandwiches and blankets. And leaders at the Hope Center told us that they just gave away their last pair of gloves. They are in desperate need of those and hats and toiletries in Lexington. Kristen Kennedy, WKYT. The Catholic Action Center in Lexington is also requesting blankets, coats, and food. As Kentuckians dig out from all this snow, the governor has issued two executive orders to protect consumers. Here they are. The first one protects you from price gouging. It allows the attorney general to investigate and prosecute those who significantly raise prices of goods and services during a disaster. The attorney general's office tells us that so far they have not had any complaints. The second order from the governor lets pharmacists to refill certain prescriptions without a physician's refill order. With record setting cold temperatures expected later this week, staying warm can be a challenge even indoors. The Lexington Fire Department is warning people to beware of using alternative heating sources. If you're not careful, using things like space heaters can cause damage to your home or injure your family. You know, do not use the oven to heat the house. If you do have space heaters, keep a three foot buffer around them. Kids, dogs, any type of burning materials, just keep that three foot buffer. 
Firefighters say it is a good time to check your smoke alarms and your carbon monoxide detectors as well. Firefighters are looking into whether a deadly house fire in central Kentucky is weather related. It happened last night on Rose Court in Mount Sterling. Sam Smith talks to the family of 76 year old Mary Souls, who was found dead in that home. It's, our, it's a story that's new at 5 30. Family members of Mary Souls live on her street. They say she was a caring, independent Christian woman. She, she could do anything for anybody, she couldn't say no. Fire officials say her home at the end of Rose Court caught fire around 7.30 last night. The cause of the fire is unknown at this stage of the investigation. The same thing goes for her cause of death. News of her death hasn't sunk in for her sister, Ella Ray Cunningham. She's just like a mother to all of her sisters, her nieces and nephews. Cunningham says her sister was well known in the area and she lived alone. Family and friends say the neighborhood won't be the same without her. I see her every day. Yeah. And she's going to be missed. Yeah, she will be missed. Officials do not suspect any foul play. We're going to miss it, but I know that we'll, we'll meet again. We'll meet again on the other side because she sure was dedicated to her servant to the Lord. Wouldn't miss a day without, I mean, a Sunday without going to church if we had church. Cunningham says her sister's funeral arrangements are still pending. In Mount Sterling, Sam Smith, WKYT. And as for those arrangements, Keith P. Clark and Son's Funeral Home in Winchester will handle them. It shut down many schools and businesses. Tonight, we are getting a better look at just how much snow Kentucky received. Officer Don flew around the state in sky first to see the snow firsthand from above. Jennifer Palumbo shows us that video as we continue our weather team coverage. We begin in Scott County, which saw anywhere from 7 to 10 inches of snow. Sky First is based at the Georgetown Airport off 460 near the Bourbon County line. Our officer Don had to dig out an area by the hangar so he could take off today and bring us this video. You can see that the runway is clear, but it's a much different scene at the Madison County Airport between Berea and Richmond. It's difficult to tell where the runway is because everything is covered with snow. We then head south to Laurel County, which got 6 to 10 inches. You can see Campground Elementary in London. It'll be empty again tomorrow, as well as all the schools in the area. Main Street is in good shape for the downtown businesses. Laurel Lake is a popular tourist spot, but it's all quiet now. The snow even covers docks around the shoreline, creating a snapshot of a winter wonderland. Jennifer Palumbo, WKYT. Some beautiful scenes there. You can help us track the snow. Just send us your photos and videos using hashtag WKYT Rules Winter.